Uh, the new war zone that we're showing here for the first time ever at Gamescom is called Ancient Hypergates. It is a deathmatch two-point objective hybrid inspired by, if anyone played Warhammer Online, Kane's Embrace, except it's a symmetrical map. And so what it means is that if you get both objectives, then they will reset, they'll explode, and everyone's got to run away from the explosion. It's sort of a slow-growing kind of like mushroom cloud, nuclear explosion, what have you, and you got to run and you can like root and knock people back into it to get to a safe area in the middle of the map. And then, of course, that brings everyone, all the survivors, to the safe area in the middle of the map, and chaos ensues. And that's when, like, tanks, uh, tank classes will play a big part in sort of controlling it and, and, and withstanding the damage there, and then being able to get a jump on the objectives when they reset and the explosion passes. Uh, the story behind it is GRI technology, ancient, you know, way advanced technological race. They have these things called hypergates that, uh, you know, allow quick travel through the far reaches of uncharted galaxy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Empire and Republic are trying to get control of them. There's these two pylons, the two objectives, that can activate their hypergate. And so you want to activate your hypergate before the enemy activates theirs because you're able to call in your fleet. And at the end of the Warzone match, your fleet will come in and finish off the rest of the players. Now, the finale aspect, we've got everything in the war zone here we're showing except for the finale aspect. The guys back at home are working on that right now. The deathmatch aspect is you get points for kills, but you don't get to get credit for those kills until you get both objectives. So basically it kind of charges up the pylons, but you need to get both pylons activated to then channel and you know charge up your uh, hypergate. But if throughout the entire match, neither of the pylon or no one gets both objectives, it does come down to who has the most kill points. Now, kill points are a one for one. You don't get one point for killing. You'll get a certain amount of points per kill, and those amount of points go up as the match goes on. Is there going to be uh, diminishing returns in those kill points if you killed the same player over and over? <laughs> no, no, there's not. Any plans for ranked wars between servers? Uh, crossover ranked Warzone, it's something that we would like to do. Uh, we don't have that. We got, you know, uh, the, the larger servers. We got a bunch of people to the larger servers now. And so the tech department is sorting out specifically what they're going to do with the future of that. But we do want to have larger pools of players, especially in the competitive and the ranked things. But it won't be, it, it, it's doubtful it would ever be every single person until we say, okay, now we're doing our kind of tournaments at the end of a season and we let people copy their characters over to another server. We're exploring doing things like that for a season, when season one kicks off. Is there any chance that you're going to be introducing uh, solo rank Warzones where you don't have to have a group of eight? Um, that's a possibility. I'm not... What's the difference then between that and the regular Warzones? Yeah, see, because the ranked Warzones, you get a group of eight together, you get better rewards, you get your rank combinations. It's kind of like when you look at the PvE parity, operations, you got to get eight together, right? But you can do a group finder option to do the, the looking for, you know, ops. And so maybe we'll do some group finder type option. I don't know that we'll necessarily do a full-on solo. We might. We're, I, it's something that we are iterating and we're testing, but there's a lot of complications that come with that. Because when you bring people together, you can never have a one-to-one -one on the matching unless, you know, it just the stars align and the exact same skill set of people are on the other side, right? So it, the impetus is kind of on the system to make the correct match as opposed to the player getting their group together and kind of acquiescing to what they go in with. So there's that hoop. Then there's the backfilling. If people leave and then backfilling and how do you do the rating adjustments on someone who backfilled? Do you not do rating adjustments on them? And then if you don't do rating adjustments, then are they as invested in the match as other people? Does it piss other people off? And so it just creates a lot of kind of animosity within the community as well as angst towards the system. So there's a lot of complications that we are exploring and we'll see if we can get through them at least to a reasonable level. Um, but otherwise, no, we might explore some other PvP options for smaller groups of people. Okay, I always wanted to ask this. Uh, why haven't you made Illum uh, an instance like Altered Valley and World the Warcraft is? So it's a huge battleground, but it's yeah. an instance. So you control the map 
players inside. Sure, yeah, no, no. I, I mean, there is one of the things about Ilum is that the designs that we went in with. We were never able to execute them. We were never able to get them in the game in time. There was a lot of emergent issues leading up to launch that sort of commanded resources from it, and it was one of the last things we were doing. Um, so we were never able to get the sort of design that we intended in there. We were going to do things like uh, objectives that would scale based on the populations or control the populations in a way that you're, you're describing, as well as potentially uh, cascading from one area to another based on the results in a certain area, from one planet to another, things like that. These are all things that we are, you know, we're testing and we're iterating on, and we're waiting for certain uh, technological developments to enable it um, on the on the different planets and things of that nature. And there's also we we want to do larger scale war zones because effectively what you're talking about is saying, hey, like when you're saying like an Alterac Valley, it's a larger scale war zone. There's stuff like that we want to do as well, but there's certain developments in the engine and things like that that you know we're working on, and we got to wait until that that's done before we we can't just like throw it out the gate and say, hey, because because we want to do this now, we're doing it now. We got to do it when when the time's right for it. Um, Elam is uh, constantly mentioned as a as a synonym for open world PvP, and uh, actually a lot of players are looking forward to some form of open world PvP. Is that even accomplishable with the Hero Engine? Is that something that, that you can explore really, or is Warzone's hit? Because Warzone's are working out pretty well. Yeah. Do you even want to spend time on the world PvP? So. Because, like you were saying, war zones are working out well. People are having fun with war zones. Like half the population does war zones on a regular basis. Uh, would they want to get involved in open world PvP? I think yes. I think I think there still is a segment of people that will want to get involved with it. Um, and then, as far as when will the you know Hero Engine allow us to do that? If if you participated in like the Rackle event and stuff like that, you saw there was some organic emergent open world PvP. The, we're continuing, and the engineers are continuing to work on optimizing the sort of large-scale stuff. Um, is it something that's possible? Of course it is. Is it something that's, you know, so far out there? No, not so far out. Um, obviously, as far as designers go, you know, we are very much... We're, designers are very much like players and that, like, we're fans of all these things as well, and we want to see them, and we want to get them online as, as soon as possible as well. Um, and... We've, we're talking about in uh, January, we're targeting in January, it may or may not happen in January, but we're targeting it, uh, doing kind of an anniversary event um, of, of what happened, so to speak, but in a, uh, in a lighthearted manner. Uh, there, there, there may or may not be some, uh, some alien race coming in and, and wreaking some havoc in the area. Um, and, and might bring attention of some other players there, and and we might see some new PvP and, and evolve from it. Uh, no, I didn't. I said I said that we have ideas and we're working on things, and it'd be a lot of fun to target something around that time frame, because we think it'd be uh, it'd be funny. Thank you. The number one question: When are we going to see the continuation of our story? Yeah, well, at E3, uh, we talked about the new planet Makeb. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 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 full fledged, and we're doing a level cap increase, and it's a major continuation of the story. Uh, I can't give you any dates on it, but it is, uh, you know, it is. In the works. I, I, it's in the works. It's in the works, and it's and you know, it's pretty far along, and we're we're really we're really excited about it. Um, so, when that happens, you'll have to talk to a producer because I can't be the first one to announce those things. Leave that to the EPs. Okay, so guild capital ships and uh, player ship customization, it is, it is something on the, you know, it's on the wall, it's something they want to do, you know, a lot of people want to do at the office. What happens when you go live? Emergent issues. New things, you know, uh, come up that you have to spend, you know, development time and resources on, right? It's sort of like kind of what happened with Ilum because Ilum was one of the last things we were doing and emergent issues with, you know, character persistence, et cetera, came up and it kind of took resources from it so we weren't able to, to fully see it, but we still want to fully see it through. Similar thing. It's like we've got the free-to-play option. Uh, we saw that a huge uh, uh, part of the player base would be re-engaged in the game if they had a free-to-play option. And, I mean, it's, it's the market, right? It's like all the online games are having free-to-play options. 
Um, so it became an emergent issue. They got in the way of some of these other things, but it is making the game more accessible to a lot more players, and it is it's servicing the players because it's players first. And so we we take surveys, we look at metrics, and we try to give the players what the players want first. You know, and obviously there's different players that want different things, but it's like we try to service the majority as much as we can. Um, obviously within reason, we don't want to break the game just because the, you know if the majority is saying, hey, we want this, but it breaks the game, we don't want to do that, but we want to service the majority as much as we can. Um, the same sex relationship yeah. stuff. There is, I think it's in McKeb in the uh, in the new update. I think there's some stuff in there, but I, I I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a writer. That's sort of the, the aspect that I'm kind of furthest That's from. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but it really comes down to, yeah, just getting it on the schedule and and, and getting that content in the game.